arguably one of the most important lectures in all of anatomy. Today's lecture is on the anatomical position and directional terms. There's a couple of things we need to talk about right away. One of those items is what is up with the naked people constantly in anatomy? And the answer is you're just gonna have to get used to it. This is a class about the human body and so you're going to see naked figures. Um, secondly, why are they always in this strange position with their hands forward like that, with the palms forward like that? And the answer is that is the anatomical position. So first I wanna get started on kind of describing to you what the anatomical position looks like, what are the characteristics of it, and then we'll get into the directional terms. So in your notes, I have everything about the anatomical position written out. Um, why do we use an anatomical position? And I put in the notes, it gives all people a common reference position when referring to locations. So let me just give you an example. Let's, for example, describe where part A is to part B. You could use words like next to to the left. You might say above, although above kind of indi indicates a direction that means like towards the ceiling on top of. You might say near, adjacent if you're being fancy. The problem is we need concrete terms that describe directions. We also want to make sure that we're describing the body as if it is in the same position all the time. Because if I describe part A to part B and I say next to or to the left, if I reversed this image, the relationship between A and B would not be the same if I said to the left. It's still near, but that's not very specific. This is the reason why we have both the anatomical position and also directional terms. The point is we want to be super, super specific because we want all people to be describing the body as if it's in this position here. So that position includes being upright. The body must be in an upright position when you describe it. Now, theoretically, you're not going to lift somebody upright just to describe something, but you describe it as if it is upright. It must be facing the observer. The observer is you, the person that's looking at this patient or figure. The arms are down at the sides. They don't need to be like plastered onto the side of the body. They just need to be hanging down in sort of a natural way. The feet are, notice, they're parallel to one another. So that just sort of arranges all the bones within the foot in a nice manner. And then number five, the palms are facing forward towards the observer. The reason for this is because when you rotate your palm towards a more natural position, um, it's not facing forward, the two bones in the forearm cross. In this example, the palm is facing forward. But as I turn, I want you to watch the forearm bones. See how they are now crossed over each other? The palm is facing towards the back side of the body. But when we rotate the palm so it's forward, those two forearm bones are now parallel. So it makes it much easier to describe the position of the forearm bones when they're parallel, as opposed to when they're crossed over each other like this. So always in anatomical position, the palm is facing forward. Okay, on to our directional terms. The first thing I want to do is put these together in pairs. So superior and inferior, a pair of opposites, anterior and posterior, a pair, opposite terms, medial lateral, opposites, proximal distal, opposites, and you guessed it, superficial and deep are opposites. So now we have, as opposed to 10 words, we have five pairs. Okay, so remember, we're looking for a concrete direction, a concrete reference point. And these are going to be comparison words. They compare one part in relation to another. Okay, so superior means above or more specifically closer towards the head. So what I'd like you to do is to color code these terms so you can easily look back and find the color. So this arrow represents superior. It's like saying above 
It's just with a concrete reference point. So let me give you an example. The chest is superior to the abdomen. So really what we're going to do is we're going to replace the word above with superior to. So is the chest above the abdomen? Yes, the chest is closer to the head compared to the abdomen. So we say superior. The opposite is inferior. So that arrow is going to be way down here and it means closer towards the bottom side of the body, the feet, closer towards the feet. It's like saying below. So I could actually reverse my example and say the abdomen is inferior to the chest. And that would be true as well. The abdomen is below or closer to the feet when I compare it to the chest. Now, what I don't want to see anybody doing is saying the abdomen is inferior, period. The question I would ask is, what is it inferior to? Because these are relationship terms. These are comparison terms. So it's not inferior to everything because if the abdomen is here, it's below the chest, but it's not below any of the other parts down here. So your sentences, your examples will never just end with the abdomen or whatever part is inferior, period. That's not an appropriate usage of the term. So we have our above superior and we have our below inferior. The next pair, anterior and posterior. So anterior means closer to the front side of the body. So out of all these arrows, this is the one that is intentionally pointing forward. So a good example sentence for that would be the belly button is anterior to the back. Belly button is closer to the front side. It's actually on the front side when compared to the back. So anterior means closer towards the front side and then posterior will mean closer towards the back side. So that's going to be this arrow. It doesn't have to be just in the neck, but that's where we can see the arrow. So closer towards the back side of the body. And I'm going to go ahead and reverse my example. So to reverse it, I would say that the back is, oops, I got a typo there, posterior to the belly button. Is that true? Is the back closer to the back side of the body? Yes, of course, in reference to the belly button. Um, let me give you another example using some of our major organs. Okay, here we are. We are looking at a mid-sagittal plane of the head. And let's go ahead and identify some things. The tongue. And this area in here is going to be the pharynx. So the tongue is anterior, closer to the front side, to the pharynx. The tongue is anterior to the pharynx. The Pharynx is posterior to the tongue. Okay, let's look at this one. We just took a transverse section of the head. We're looking at this from underneath. See, these are all the teeth. These are all the teeth here, the lower teeth. Again, here's the tongue. In this area back here, and it's kind of hard to tell, there's the uvula. Um, this area back here is the pharynx. So in this case, that way is the front, see the nose, and this direction is the back. So the tongue is still anterior to the pharynx. The pharynx is still posterior to the tongue. So you can see no matter which way we look at the body, the relationship holds true and that's what matters. Okay, back to our lesson. The next two, medial and lateral. You have to remember where the mid-sagittal plane is, the midline. So I'm actually going to add a midline to our little figure over here, and I'm going to be very specific about it. 
I really want to concentrate on dividing him in half. Okay, I've drawn in as best I can the midline. Medial means that a part of you is closer to that midline than something else. So the arrows that are going to represent medial are here. Notice we're pointing to the midline from either side. Heart is medial to the lungs. Let's take a look at that in the atlas. Okay, we're looking at the chest area without any bones. Here's the bones, just for reference. We got lungs on either side, and notice the heart is definitely closer to the middle, which would be here-ish when compared to the lungs. So the heart would be classified as medial to the lungs. It's not in front or behind. It's really between them, um, closer to the middle. The esophagus, we could also say, is medial to the lungs because it is also closer to the middle. Now the opposite would be lateral. The lung is lateral to the heart. This lung is also lateral, or the lung is lateral to the esophagus. So lateral means away from the midline. So the arrows that are gonna indicate lateral are the ones pointing away from that central divider. Keep in mind, it's an up and down middle. That's what a mid-sagittal is. It's not a transverse plane. So let's reverse our example and say the lungs are lateral to the heart. It does not have to be two parts on either side of a central part. Let's take a look at one more example. All right, we're looking at primarily the urinary system here. Notice the kidneys on either side here and this tube and this tube, which are slightly closer to the center, the ureters. The kidneys are lateral to the ureters. The ureters are medial because they're closer towards the middle. So think medial, middle. The vertebral column is medial compared to the pelvic bones, the hip bones. All right, our next pair, proximal and distal. I do wanna make a note on the side. We are gonna concentrate these words on usage for limbs only. So I'm gonna squeeze that note in over on the side. Okay, proximal, distal, limbs only. Let's take a look why we will only apply those to limbs. Proximal means closer to where the limb joins the body trunk. Okay, so it's directly referencing a limb. So that's why we only use it on limbs. So proximal is like saying up, on the limb. And distal is like saying further distance down on the limb. Um, so think proximal proximity closer to where the limb joins the body. Distal distance, further distance down on the limb. And we have to indicate our attachment points for the limb. So where does your limb join your body? It joins right there. First of all, limb, arm, and leg. And then your leg joins your body about there. So proximal means closer to that point. Distal meaning further from that point. And again, we're comparing multiple parts. Proximal, up the limb. Distal, down the limb. Let's use some examples. They've got to be limb parts, right? So, the thigh is proximal to the calf. The thigh is up the limb compared to the calf, which is down here. Um, I'm going to not reverse the example. Um, I'm going to use a different example, and I'm going to use one on the arm for distal. The wrist is distal to the shoulder. So it doesn't have to be like the muscular parts. It doesn't have to be the joints. It could be any part as long as it's in the limb. One more thing about proximal and distal. You have to compare two parts on the same limb. 
Um, you wouldn't compare like the elbow to the knee and use proximal. You would use the elbow is above or superior to the knee. The knee is inferior. But when you're looking at two parts on the same limb, you use proximal and distal. It talks about how close it is to where that limb joins. All right, so limbs only on proximal and distal. Limbs only. The last one superficial and deep. We only have two arrows left. So superficial means closer to the surface of the body. Don't forget, however, superficial meaning closer to the surface. I would really rather add a another arrow because it could be closer to the front or closer to the back, but it's closer to the outside, the external surface of the body. Deep means deep. It means further in because it's from both directions. It's not, it's not the same as front and back. So examples. The skull is superficial to the brain. That it is. The skull encases the brain. Um, it's all around it. And you'd have to go inside the skull to get to the brain. Let me give you a different one for deep. And it's going to feel a little awkward with grammar, but the lungs are deep to the rib cage. The R deep too, I know feels awkward to you, but you'll get used to it. Um, these two we use for enclosing relationships generally, where there is one part inside of another. And I'm going to make a note on the side. Okay, and I'm going to make this look kind of messy, but I want you to um, be very limited in your usage of these, only when there's one part inside of another. So examples in the atlas. So here's the skull. If I delete, the brain would be inside. So the brain is deep to the skull. Let me add it. There it is. It was totally inside. There you go. Where is my ribs? There we go. The ribs. And if I add my respiratory system, they're inside of it. So we would do it that way. If I add my... Let me get rid of everything and just add my heart. This is cardiovascular. Look. Here's the pericardial sac around the heart. We would say that is superficial to the heart. The heart is deep to the pericardium. Okay, so there's some examples. So your most common are gonna be the first four. You'll use those a lot, a lot, a lot. These are a little bit more limited usage, medial, lateral, proximal, distal, very specific circumstances. Superficial and deep, very limited, has to be one part enclosing another. So there you have it, anatomical position and directional terms.